Number 19, a physicist makes a cup of instant coffee and notices that as the coffee cools, its level drops three millimeters in the glass cup. Show that this decrease cannot be due to thermal contraction by calculating the decrease in level if the 350 cubic centimeter of coffee is in a seven centimeter diameter cup and decreases in temperature from 95 to 45. All right. So uh, basically what we need to do is we need to calculate the change in volume of this coffee. Okay, so originally, let's just say the coffee, you know, went up to this uh, level and then it dropped, you know, three millimeters as they're mentioning to us in the question. Now I need to have consistency of units so I can do one of two things. I could either convert both of these to meters, all right, or I could just convert this to centimeters. Uh, because if then you realize all the values will be in centimeters, the volume is in cubic centimeters, this is in centimeters, this will be in centimeters. And in the formulas here, we basically can take any unit of length we want, area or volume, and uh, plug that in. And whatever unit we plug in for uh, those variables will get spit out for the variables that we're calculating. Um, so that being the case, let me just, you know, I'll can you know, do this conversion, just divide that by 10 basically. So this is 0.3, all right, centimeters. That's how much it decreases by. So basically we're trying to find the change in volume of the coffee, right? So change in volume of the coffee will be equal to the uh, coefficient of thermal uh, expansion or contraction of the coffee, right? Multiplied by the initial volume of the coffee multiplied then by the change in temperature of the coffee. Now remember the change in temperature is gonna be the final minus the initial. They gave that to us, so we know this. Okay, great. The initial value of the coffee, well they said calculating the decrease in level if the 350 cubic centimeter of coffee, so that this must be the initial volume, so we know that. The uh, coefficient for coffee is that of water, all right, because coffee is primarily water. And uh, that's going to be uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, especially, I mean, especially if you're drinking American coffee, right? Um, so we have the coefficient of thermal uh, expansion or contraction to be 210 times 10 to the minus 6. And that would allow us to find the change in volume of the coffee. Now, that's great. So we can plug everything in and we can find the change in volume of the coffee. Now, what they're asking us, though, is they're asking us to basically identify that this won't be the total change in height that that coffee will experience, all right? So what I could do here is I can basically calculate what change in height must have happened by finding, right, the change in volume, okay? Now, how do we do that? Well, remember, this coffee is taking up the shape of the container, and the container is a cylinder, okay? So whatever volume the coffee is changing by, it's equivalent to whatever shape the whatever volume the shape of the container is giving to it in other words the volume of the coffee that's going to be uh, changing by would be equal to because we could say the volume of coffee is going to be equal to the volume of the container okay or the volume of the cylinder now not the whole cylinder all right but some value so we know that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h and this is really what we're after. We're really after the height difference, right? Because no matter where you go in terms of the height in this cylinder, it's going to have the same radius because it has the same diameter, right? So it's really the change in height, or it's really the height variable that's changing. So in other words, I can take this and plug it on in, okay, for that. And here now we have pi r squared of the coffee times the change in height, okay? times the change in height of that coffee. So the change in volume is directly related to the change in height, okay, of the coffee. Why? Because this, the container doesn't change in radius, right? It's a rigid glass container. So that's why I know that all the volume will be changing as a result of the change in height of that coffee. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So this is then equal to the beta times VI times delta T. Solving for delta H, just divide out pi r squared. Right, so delta H, change in height of the coffee, is going to be equal to the beta value of the coffee times the initial volume of the coffee times the uh, change in temperature of the coffee, all then divided by pi, pi, and then R uh, squared, the radius of the coffee. And remember, the radius of the coffee is the same thing as the radius of the container. So now all we need to do is just plug it on in, right? 
So the beta value is that of water basically, 210 times 10 to the minus six. The initial volume they told us was 350, all right, cubic centimeters. The cha uh, change in temperature is gonna be uh, final minus initial, so it's gonna be 45, right, minus 95. That should make sense because this is gonna come out to be negative, which means that the height change was negative, all right, which means that it has gone down. And then divide that by now, pi times the radius of the cup. Well, we know the diameter, right, it's seven, so the radius is half of that. So it's going to be 3.5 all over 2. Square that. And what do we get? So the change in height of the coffee. So now just plug it on into the calculator. So 210 times 10 to the minus 6 times 350 times in parentheses 45 minus 95. And then divide that now by in parentheses pi times... Uh, oh, 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 made a mistake. Sorry, guys. Well, uh, it's not 350 over 2. It's 350, right? Because I already divided it by 2. Sorry, just realize as I'm plugging it in, right? Realize that doesn't make sense. So then uh, pi times 3.5 squared. And we get a negative value. So it's negative point uh, zero nine zero zero nine. What is this? Five, five, three or so five, three. Okay, so that's going to be the change in height. Now you have to remember what are the units, right? Well, I use cubic centimeters here, I use centimeters here, so the value that gets spit out is in terms of centimeters. So this is the amount that the height is changing. Now, we can compare now this centimeter value to this centimeter value. And if you notice, what it's saying here is that the height of the coffee, if it's just due to volume contraction, the height change of that coffee in the container will only be nine hundredths of a centimeter. Okay, whereas the actual change of the height of the coffee is three tenths of a centimeter, right? This value here is greater than this value. And therefore, we just kind of prove the, what the question's asking us to do, right? I mean, we just prove that the total height change is not a result of just the change in volume of the coffee. And it says that it's mostly, right, most of the drop in the level is actually due to escaping bubbles of air. So there you go. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate it very much, and we'll see you next time. Take care.